shall we, shall we just start? I mean, there's a good one to be in. Um, so we don't have much, too much time today, so... Uh, let's, maybe we should just start. Can I just come? Alright, so um, thank you very much for um, uh, coming, uh, coming along. I'm truly humbled uh, to have like, so many um, comrades uh, come along. Thank you very much. This <laughs> is so my uh, first time in uh, New York Comic Con, and uh, so today uh, I'm very humbled to be invited by the Japan Foundation. Where's the Japan Foundation? There you go. <laughs> Okay, and um, I'm going to forget later on, but you're going to give away some stuff to everyone, is that right? Okay, so uh, she's going to give you away uh, a goodie bag uh, later on, uh, and as the name suggests, it's like full of goodies. Uh, there's like $50 bills in there, and, and so on and so on. Oh yeah! <laughs> okay, so uh, the Japan Foundation in the US, they do uh, many different things. Uh, they promote uh, Japanese culture and they also promote the Japanese language proficiency, proficiency test as well. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why I'm here today, is to talk about um, how I study Japanese. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is talk about um, some of my work, um, how I learned Japanese, and how I became to um, basically do uh, what I do today. Okay, so um, some of you uh, may know some of this, and some of you uh, may not. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so born raised in the uh, UK and moved to Japan uh, roughly around um, 13 years ago. And then uh, ever since I've uh, been in Japan, I've worked mostly uh, in the internet. So, uh, website manager for Amazon, uh, product manager for Microsoft, um, and so on and so on. And then I left Microsoft to start up my uh, own company, whereby I um, share Japanese culture uh, with the world um, through a brand called Culture Japan. So through that brand, uh, we do uh, many different things. So one of the things is obviously a web. And um, <clears throat> so I have a website called uh, Culture Japan. And uh, we share lots of um, things. Um, talk, um, Pop culture, I uh, love uh, Japanese pop culture. So this was in, uh, in a maid's cafe in Akihabara. Uh, it's a culture, so this is probably one of the world's most awesome uh, itasha. So itasha is basically a car which has been plastered with like really cute uh, two-dimensional girls. <coughs> so that's one example of there. And uh, so I decided to plaster my car one day. And... Um, <laughs> this, um, if you have a card, you, you need to do this because if you don't, it's like lost opportunity. So basically, so we have Costco in Japan as well, and uh, my wife, uh, she goes to Costco and she goes to Shibuya sometimes. And that day, I will see on Twitter uh, like folks tweeting, "Hey, I saw this like Mirai uh, Itosha in uh, Shibuya," and so on. <clears throat> so it's um, uh, very uh, recommended. And um, I done up my bike as well. So this is called an uh, Itachari, uh, which is a bike uh, made into. Uh, plus it with like really cute uh, two-dimensional girls. <laughs> so um, living in Japan, I mean, I know what it's. I've always known what it's like to want to like live um, and work in Japan. And I think much of the photos that you see on the internet is uh, lots of like touristy photos, uh, which are great. But um, I also like to share uh, some of like just just daily life, basically. So this is just like um, a restaurant just around the corner, and it looks like, absolutely fantastic. And um, so I like to like share lots of my um, daily life on, on the website. So one of the great things about Japanese culture is that they've like really kept their um, tradition from the past. And like throughout the year, there's like lots of um, uh, very rich traditional uh, Japanese um, events, uh, which I like to cover and share as well. Uh, I like to share pictures of girls. Uh, no, no, I mean I like to share. Uh, <laughs> 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 what I meant to say was that um, I like to share uh, pictures of a uh, fashion. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, uh, so we've got like, modern fashion over here, two lovely ladies over here in uh, Harajuku, a very fashionable district. And uh, more girls, I mean more uh, <laughs> traditional fashion, that's right, traditional fashion um, as well. So a couple of lots of uh, Japanese technology um, as well, like on the side. And so this 
particular contraption is a, um, it's a bicycle park. And underneath this, there's like a huge well which goes down a few hundred feet uh, into the ground. And what you do is you stick your bike in there and this huge robotic arm like plucks it and like plunges it down into the depths of the earth and uh, will return to you uh, at the end of the day. So uh, we love covering technology like this. So I do cover, uh, I do try to travel in Japan as much as I can. And um, this uh, photo was taken in a place called Edo Wonderland in uh, Nikko, which is a few hours uh, drive north of Tokyo. So I actually go there every year to train to be a ninja. And, uh, so the first year I became a middle ninja. Uh, and the next time I go, I'll be an upper ninja. So this over here is the ninja art of um, Photoshop. <laughs> so, uh, Japan has like many uh, great places to visit, so there's like traditional places like um, Asakusa over here. And these um, garments you can actually rent. Uh, so if you're going to Asakusa, uh, you can actually rent these like Japanese traditional garments and like walk around for the day. And we also cover uh, lots of very uh, modern places in Tokyo as well. So this is uh, not Photoshop. Uh, this is actually a huge uh, one one scale uh, Gundam. Um, and I'm sure most of you who are familiar with Gundam will know uh, about this. <clears throat> so, uh, this is in a place called Odaiba, and uh, there's a newly opened Daiba City. Absolutely fantastic. So, also cover some of the more um, serious topics in Japan as well. So, after the earthquake um, struck in 2011, I went up to the most heavily stricken uh, areas to cover the um, recovery efforts by the volunteers. So I have a few um, clients um, in the anime industry. So some of my clients include um, a small company. Uh, they make loads of uh, fantastic figures. Uh, Bushy Road, uh, trading card games. Uh, Konami, SNAKE! <laughs> and uh, Kodokawa, uh, King Records, and uh, Asking Me Jones. Some snake fans next door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, very recently, uh, Production IG jumped on board. So I'm helping them with an anime called uh, 009, uh, Reed Cyborg. And this is directed by, uh, what's his name, Kan uh, Kamiyama Kenji-san, who done Ghost in the Shell and Even Up Bodies and so on. So very recently, um, I was appointed as a creative director by the Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry uh, for a particular uh, project. And so I was like, very deeply humbled that um, my work of like, sharing Japanese culture uh, throughout the world uh, became known by the Japanese government and they contacted me uh, for my services. So this guy in the middle of here, he is actually the minister. So some of you may recognize him. Um, he was like wearing a blue suit on TV, sweating. Uh, when um, during the nuclear crisis, so um, so that's him right now. Okay, so we do um, lots of uh, TV production as well. So I've got a TV show called um, Culture Japan. So it's in its uh, so in the US it's actually shown on Mnet. I was wondering how many of you have seen it on Mnet? Can I see? And then, so we also show it on like Crunchyroll and like YouTube as well. So in total, how many of you have like, seen? And quite a lot next door, I see as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this basically is an extension of my writings on the web, and I cover lots of uh, Japanese pop culture, lots of traditional culture as well. And so we're going to have a look at um, a quick trailer of Culture Japan season two. Three, two.
So I've got another TV show uh, in Japan. So Worst Culture Japan is like uh, aimed at folks like around the world. Um, this uh, TV show over here, Tokyo Makes TV uh, Check Time, is aimed at folks um, inside Japan, where I report on like uh, hot otaku topics um, around the world uh, for business folks um, in Japan. It's called Tokyo Mix uh, Check Time. We're going to see a really quick uh, clip uh, coming up. ダニーチューさんのお届けします。日本のドスカルチャー発信サイトカルチャージャパンオタク Side of things. So we had like Hatsune Miku uh, come over um, and perform in the flesh uh, in front of like thousands and uh, thousands and thousands. Um, so this was um, last year. Also help out with an event in Asia called uh, Anime Festival um, Asia as well, uh, where I look after lots of uh, seiyu, uh, anime producers, and so on and so on. Uh, like a few booths. Uh, here are some examples of the booths. Uh, which I've been uh, developing, and I didn't have a chance to develop a booth this time at um, Comic Con, uh, but I'll definitely do so next time. Yeah. 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 And um, I do have an event called uh, Culture Japan Night. Uh, so uh, wherever I go in the world, I try to like gather like-minded folks like yourself, and um, like have your network uh, amongst each other. So unfortunately, I didn't get time to like, arrange something this time, but I'll definitely be back uh, next time, and uh, I'll definitely have uh, Culture Japan Night. Okay, so uh, we also do some character uh, and some content and character development. So, uh, not a lot of people know, but I've developed a character called Yume Nanami-chan. So, as you can see, she is dressed in uh, traditional workman uh, clothes. And uh, so, the reason is that, um, so Japanese roadworks are really, really cool. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen them or not, but they have like flashing lights all over the place, they've got lots of different things like moving about and 
It's absolutely, it's absolutely fantastic. And I just wanted to like let everyone around the world like know um, how cool they are. So basically, um, Japan they have like these roadwork signs, and um, they um, this sign over here says. Uh, They'll be like fixing the roads, and we're gonna fix it between the hours of like eight and five o'clock. It's absolutely amazing. You know, they say they're gonna fix it between eight and five, and they actually do between eight and five. So wow. at five o'clock, you know, the roads are all patched up, and it's like, you know, uh, you wouldn't have known that um, there was like lots of construction going on. So here's another sign over here. So wherever you go in Japan, there's like this man bowing down, uh, like apologizing to you, and wherever you go, there's like lots of these signs, like of. Um, being apologized to. So this is just one example over here. And another one over here. Another one over here. So um, the purpose was to have this character at the location of uh, Japanese roadwork sites uh, around Japan. And uh, this was quite, this was probably last year ago actually. So um, a construction company, they contacted me and they asked whether they could use a nanami -chan. And uh, they're using it now to like guide uh, poor lost people uh, around the construction areas. So uh, over the next year, there's going to be lots more uh, Nanani chan um, all over Japan. <laughs> so I have this uh, character called um, Mirai Suenaga, and uh, so a um, masculine character which uh, keeps me company uh, during work. And uh, so Mira Chan, she's got like uh, a couple of fans uh, around the world. And uh, so here are a bunch of them uh, cosplaying as a Mira Chan. Uh, lots of uh, some fan art over here. And um, some of you already know that she's already got her own uh, her own airlines as well. Wow, that actually. And uh, so here are some of her um, her costumes, what she wears uh, from day to day. And um, so there's actually a story uh, for Mirai-chan called um, Mirai uh, Millennium. So last um, year I worked with an animation studio to produce a very short anime sequence which we used at, uh, on the opening of uh, Culture Japan. And uh, this is it, um, coming up next. <laughs> trying to develop this um, story for a very long time and I haven't really had the time because of like um, culture Japan production uh, but this time I've ma managed to like muster uh, some time to like work on the story uh, which I'll be talking about uh, more in the future. So here are just like some of the concept art uh, work from uh, Mirai Millennium over here. Uh, so it's a science fiction um, story but there's lots of uh, traditional Japan uh, in it as well. So this is a docking bay for some of the retrograde suits some of the building concepts. 
It's Mirai Chan's school, okay. and also one of the uh, Millennium Gates. And here are some sketches from the uh, scenario. And this is the bad guy. <laughs> And here are some of the uh, other characters. So, uh, the three on the right, uh, some of you have may have seen before. And the two new ones on the left are uh, ones which were born very recently. And I'll be talking more about them uh, very soon as well. So, uh, there's been lots of uh, collaboration work uh, with uh, Japanese uh, companies. So, uh, some of you may have noticed, uh, how many have you seen Mayochiki? Did you watch Mayochiki? That's quite a few of you. So, um, Mirai, she made lots of cameo appearances in Mayo Chiki, and uh, which is by uh, Star Child. And she was also in an anime called Twin Angel by Kadokawa. And uh, she was in a game uh, by Nitro Plus, you know, they bring a Steins Gate and so on. And in a game called Sonic Kami. And she was very recently in uh, a game called Dracu Riot, lots of cameo uh, appearances. Over here, she's actually on the poster in, in, in the back. <laughs> so um, we develop uh, lots of uh, products um, as well. So uh, based around um, my mascot character, Mirai-chan, over here. And so one of the products we're working on is um, doll-related over here. So you know, many people ask me, you know, Danny, what, what you, you know, you grown man, what are you doing carrying around this doll? <laughs> and yeah, I, thought, I thought the answer was like, really obvious. It's because we were carrying them around like 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is proof. Is proof? <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, so I'm just like carrying on the tradition, basically. <laughs> so, um, so I think they're kind of like cute. And I've uh, got some photos of um, some of them. Yeah. I'm actually trying to poison you through these photos. <laughs> Wearing my muscle character's um, uniform. Okay, I'm working with um, ASCII Media Works. Uh, they brought us titles like um, Railgun, Toradora, and Ori um, uh, very recently. So we're publishing a book called The Worldwide Otaku Report. So this book is going to be in English and in Japanese, and it labels folks, um, mainly like the anime industry in Japan, if they want to like, learn about like, American otaku, they can pick up this book and like, read uh, about American um, otaku. So um, there was a particular submission period whereby like, uh, otaku in America, they would submit their details and uh, to become a representative uh, for the country. And there were like so many uh, incredible American otaku that we decided not to include just one, but there's kind of like, I think there's probably like 10 uh, different American otaku like based all around the US. So it's going to be a fantastic book, and that's going to be out um, in December ish. Um, <laughs> so um, I've been working on. So as a person like learning Japanese, I mean, I know what it's like, and I felt that Japanese learning material it hasn't been too fun, and I really wanted to make it like much more um, enjoyable. So I came up with uh, this product over here called uh, Moe Kana. So these are basically um, back over here. So these are basically uh, Japanese language uh, flashcards, and um, the first set basically teaches us uh, the basic Japanese syllabary called uh, hiragana. And um, here's another example as well. And it comes with a plastic bag, so that you know, when you want to study while you're swimming or having a shower, uh, <laughs> it's going to protect your cards as well. And uh, here's the full set over here. And some fellow, uh, some fellow gaijin learning uh, Japanese. <laughs> and even if you can't read um, hiragana like straight away, you know, there's lots of other ways that you can play them. <laughs> So, um, Waikana was developed, so I developed Waikana for like foreigners uh, to learn Japanese. Um, but what happened was lots of Japanese folks, they bought Waikana uh, for the kids uh, to learn Hiragana. And they've been like sending me in photos um, like this. And it sold so well uh, in Japan that it became the second best selling anime product on uh, Amazon Japan. Uh, which was, um, it's quite a nice surprise actually. 
So, um, um, the product, uh, so the product is developed by, my, by myself, and I release it through a good smart company. And so a good smart company, they just happen to have a booth um, in the exhibition hall, and they just happen to have uh, some white color. And uh, we're giving away this, uh, this red card over here, Shogakusei, elementary school student, which is a very important part of uh, Japanese uh, anime culture. And uh, you can, if you get yourself a pack of white card, if they've got some left, then um, they are going to give you uh, one of these cards. So uh, we sold like tens of thousands of packs of um, white card around the world. And it only made sense to produce uh, the next product, which is uh, Moe Kanji. So basically, we are going to use um, Moe illustrations to help people learn um, kanji. So these are, um, I haven't checked any of these yet, but um, these are going to be released in uh, this coming December. And so uh, you're getting, I think you guys are the first people to like, look at most of these um, illustrations, which are coming out soon. And uh, two of my most favorite cards are here. Do you like these cards here? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And um, some more cards. So we've got um, a collaboration card over here with Nitro Plus. Uh, so there's a Super Sonico over there. And uh, two of my very favorite cards over here. Okay, that's how it's in the center. So I also develop um, mobile applications. So we've released uh, Mirai Clock 3, which has been out for the iOS for quite a while. And we've very recently released um, the Android version. So this is uh, a very rough video which I took in the hotel like this morning. So if you just search for Mirai Clock 3, it's available for your Android. And I haven't included any of those like really annoying ads, so there's like no ads in it. And um, she will keep you company on those very uh, runnery nights. <laughs> so um, you can like, like tap her and zoom in like that. Kind of like stroke her on the head. And you can actually shake the phone as well, and she like makes a very interesting. Um... <laughs> so that's actually like a two-dimensional illustration, but we've like made it so that it appears to be uh, 3D using live 2D technology. So, um, and if you like drag around, she would like look at where your finger is. And she gives like zoom out again. And if you touch her off by <laughs> she gets a little angry. Anyway. So uh, that's free right now, uh, Mirai Clock 3. Okay. So uh, we've got uh, another figure coming out. So we've had a uh, Figma released by Good Smart Company. Uh, we've got an Android version of a uh, Mirai Chan. So that's coming out in December as well. And she comes with like um, sort of uh, bits and pieces. Uh, she comes with like a white kind of style face as well. Very sweet indeed. And uh, she comes with um, a small miniature pack of these white kind of. Uh, it's actually a full pack. So this has got like 50 cards in it. And so this Android version will actually have like 50 cards, but like mini versions as well. And she also comes with um, a little car. Uh, in a kind of like small nutshell, uh, we're going to take a break right now and have a look at um, Good Video. <laughs>
To like do what I do um, in Japan. So, one raised in the UK. You know, they don't get that in Japan. You know, it's only like an overseas thing. So, whenever I try to explain that to a Japanese person, they kind of like look at me like this. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, um, born and raised in um, London, uh, brought up in Hackney and um, didn't do incredibly well at school. I was kind of like bullied all the time. I had like the, the full assortment. I was like gang beaten up, like dragged through gravel and I had my stuff set on fire. It was a lot of fun. Um, anyway, so yeah, I was like really lost when I was uh, very young. I like, didn't know uh, what I wanted to do in life. And then I discovered um, Japanese culture. Um, so I discovered Japanese culture through um, a games machine, uh, the Sega Mega Drive. And uh, this is it over here. And I wanted to like learn more about the Mega Drive, so I went to um, a Japanese bookshop called um, the Japan Center, and where I picked up lots of um, some magazines about the Mega Drive, but mostly about uh, like really pretty Japanese young girls um, and two-dimensional girls as well, as you can see. So um, I couldn't read. I didn't have the um, opportunity to like learn. Uh, Chinese when I was a kid, so I basically had to like start off from scratch and basically got myself um, some books, some dictionaries, and um, basically started to like self teach myself um, Japanese. So one of the uh, <laughs> mangas which I uh, learned lots of uh, Japanese from was a uh, Korean Shinchan, absolutely fantastic uh, manga series. So, um, when I was at the um, Japan Center one day, the, the, the bookshop where I went to like, buy lots of Japanese magazines, I saw this uh, magazine uh, cover, which was this one over here, and all of a sudden it started like hover, and it started like glow, and I said, like, oh my god, what's this? And it had like this really cute girl on, on the cover. And uh, I said, okay, that's it, so uh, that's my girlfriend. So I declared her as my girlfriend, so her name was Anishita Hikaru, and I wanted to like know everything about uh, he kind of sang. So I just, like, bought all the CDs and videos and stuff like that. And uh, so this was the sort of music that I listened to uh, like 20 years ago. This is. before my wife gets angry. <laughs> She's sitting over there. Anyway, so um, listening to Japanese, so Japanese CDs, most of them come with um, the lyrics, so it's, um, it's very good for you listening and uh, very good for like um, studying Japanese at the same time. So uh, 20 years ago, there was like no internet. Can you imagine like no internet? Awesome. No internet, you know? Uh, yes. Anyway, Scandalous. so... Um, Back in the era without any internet, um, I wanted to like, watch uh, Japanese um, TV. So I went along to a bookshop uh, in St. Paul's and I, got, uh, I started to like, read these videos uh, which had like um, some dramas, some variety shows, um, some anime and so on. And um, basically they were like recordings of uh, TV in Japan and they included the, the commercials. And um, so basically at home I would like, leave them playing in the background and it would be, it'd be as if I was in Japan, uh, like just going about my business and there was like Japanese TV. 
And when I was out and about, I would basically record that onto a cassette tape and I'd listen to the sounds of those TV shows, which also helped me um, learn Japanese. Writing is very important. Um, I think in this day and age with the internet, lots of folks, they do try to like, learn um, Japanese solely from the internet. And I think that humans have been like, learning languages like, for like, hundreds and hundreds of years through like, speaking and through writing. So I definitely think it's like, very important to um, continue to actually write as much Japanese as you can. So um, there's lots of kanji, and um, in order to like, learn as much kanji as possible, um, I basically skipped the, the stroke order. So but when you write kanji, there's like a stroke order. And um, I decided, okay, I don't want to learn that. I just want to like, know how it's read and, um, and what it looks like. So this is the sort of thing I've done. Got myself like uh, big pieces of paper, uh, drew like lots of kanji on it, and just stuck it all over my house. So whenever I went to the toilet, there would be like kanji. When I was in the kitchen, there was kanji. And um, it's... Well, basically, what I was doing at that time, I didn't realize, was I was using a technique called um, immersion, language immersion. So basically, this is to um, immerse yourself in that um, in that culture of uh, that language of that culture. And uh, so, an example over here is uh, so Hikaru-san, uh, my imaginary girlfriend. So I had like, lots of pictures of her. And, and other girlfriends, uh, and other girlfriends. And uh, so like the magazine cover, like on the wall over here, I would like memorize like everything that was like written um, on that magazine uh, cover basically. And so this like little things like this that we could be doing uh, every day amongst our lives to like help us uh, learn um, language. This is a picture uh, taken very recently in a place called Angel in London. And there's like lots of roadworks going on. London is really famous for its roadworks. Uh, every time I go back, there's like roadworks. There's like no road workers, and it's like full of like newspapers and like chips and like cones, and like buses come in like five in a row. It's the like same bus, the 38 bus, and it's like all in a row. But anyway, so I used to, I wanted to like learn, I wanted to like speak Japanese, and so I started taking classes um, at Angel. And uh, at first, you know, it was okay. And then I said to my sensei, hey sensei, you know, one of my dreams is to live and work in Japan. And he said to me, just forget. You know, as a foreigner, that's just not going to happen. Said, what are you talking about? You're a Japanese sensei. What? 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 <laughs> and uh, um, so the only reason I could think of was that he wanted me to stay in England so I could keep paying for these um, lessons to like, beat him. And so I just like didn't get it. So I think a very important thing here is that um, whenever you try to do something in life, there's always going to be someone who tries to stop you for whatever reason. You know, there's like many different reasons that they can like uh, they want to stop you. And uh, so I think the very important thing is to you know don't let others tell you that you uh, that you can't learn because you can. So anyway, I moved on and. Um, and one of the things that I had done was to um, set goals for myself. Uh, when you're studying Japanese on your own, I think it's very, you know, you're not in classes, you know, there's no one to like discipline you. Uh, it's very important to like discipline yourself and to set goals for yourself. So one of the things I had done was to uh, just apply for the Japanese language uh, proficiency test. So um, I basically applied for the test, uh, which was, it took place like um, at the end of every year. And um, I passed level four one year, and then I skipped level three, and then I passed uh, level two. So I think it's very important for, especially when you're learning Japanese on your own, uh, to discipline yourself and set goals for yourself. I think the Japanese uh, proficiency test um, is a great way uh, for you to um, set, set a goal for yourself. And actually in Japan, um, it's actually a standard. So if you're like going for like a job interview, they will ask you what level of uh, Japanese proficiency test um, you have. So uh, carrying on from uh, the incident at Angel, um, I wanted to like speak uh, Japanese. So I came across this language exchange club in Bond Street, and um, so basically it was a room um, run by an accountant, and lots of Japanese folks would come along. And gathered with like lots of uh, local folks and they would like have um, a language exchange basically so that really helped me uh, interface with like Japanese folks and like learn um, the language 
So at the time, there's like no computers. Uh, the accountant's office, they had like this word processor, like a typewriter. And I said, hey, can I just borrow your typewriter? And they said, yeah, sure. And basically what I did was I took it and I typed out like all the kanji. Um, typed them all out uh, on this like sheet of A4 and I blew it up um, using photocopier into like A3, had them like all over my house. And I made like really small ones which I would laminate and I'd just like carry around with me. So like if I'm waiting for a bus or a train or whatever, there's like no downtime uh, and there's like no downtime when I'm studying. And I also made um, a version like this over here. Uh, these are uh, verbs over here. Actually, if you folks who can read Japanese, it actually says at the top over here, it says Nihon, there was a Nantukan Kakikata Danichu. Nishida Hikaru chan no koibito. So it basically says, um, I am Nishida Hikaru's uh, boyfriend. So uh, I really did think I was a boyfriend. But anyway. <laughs> so um, at that, those um, Japanese language exchange classes, I met lots of um, Japanese folks, and they became uh, very good friends indeed. So one of the things that um, I recommend like, when you're learning Japanese is to learn as much about the culture as possible. And you can do that by um, speaking to um, Japanese folks and like making lots of um, Japanese friends as well. And so I spent lots of time with them um, when I was in Japan. Like they took me around and so on and so on. So um, it's a very um, important experience. Another thing that you can be doing, uh, and obviously all of this was like in London, so you don't need to be in Japan to do this, is to seek a part-time jobs uh, which uh, are related to Japanese language. So uh, at the time, I got myself a part-time job as a translator uh, for a publishing company who was publishing books aimed at um, Japanese women who were relocated um, to um, to England. So I was doing like some sort of a translation work and earn money at the same time. But not everything I did was uh, for money. Um, I did some things for free. So there was a place. Uh, there was a company called, um, I think Island Publishing or something. They released lots of um, anime titles in the UK. So I went along one day to their offices and I just uh, rang the bell and said, I can speak Japanese and I love anime, um, please, please use me. And um, basically the boss said, um, okay, and they set up this uh, magazine, this fan uh, club magazine called Magazine. And basically what they did was they would send me videos. So here are some videos over here. And uh, these weren't released in the UK yet, and I'll basically review them, they would be published in the magazine, and that would help as promotion for uh, those anime titles. So, uh, just some examples of what you could be doing uh, regarding jobs. So, I did get myself um, another job in a Japanese restaurant called Benihana. You go to Benihana every day in the US, is that right? No. Anyway, so yeah, they've got like um, chefs who like throw around knives and like kill customers and, and they take their meat and cook it in front of them for other customers. Uh, but I couldn't stand the smell of the human meat. So uh, I was a waiter instead uh, where I like carry dishes, wash dishes and but mostly spent my time like breaking dishes. And um, it's it fantastic because I also got to meet my uh, wife. Uh, no, no, not this one. Uh, not this one too. Um, but this one over here. And um, so I think that without uh, discovering Japanese culture, I definitely wouldn't have been able to like meet uh, my lovely missus. <laughs> Working at Benihana, uh, that enabled me to like save some cash to um, head over to uh, Japan for a few trips. So uh, went to Japan, and so this is another thing that I re recommend you to do if you like really interested in Japanese culture, you want to work in the anime industry, or you like really uh, want to like really really want to learn the language because it's just it's like just it's, it's an incredible um, stimulation. So this is my first visit over there, and uh, one of the things I wanted to do was to take back the experience that I had with me uh, back to the UK. I mean, obviously I didn't want to leave Japan, but I probably would have gotten in trouble if I just stayed there. Um, so I got myself this like mini disc player, a recorder, and I sat outside of Shibuya and just recorded the ambient sounds of Shibuya. And um, basically I took those sounds back to me. And when I was in England studying Japanese, I would like listen to those sounds 
which served as like a huge motivation for me to actually go back to Japan and listen to those sounds with my own ears. So you notice on the wall there is a picture of a skyline of, um, it's actually Shinjuku over here, and this was like another motivational talisman for me, uh, which basically helped me um, study Japanese more. Another thing I've done was buy lots of Japanese learning material like these over here. <laughs> okay. So it's very important to like get lots of Japanese learning material like DVDs or whatever. Well, they didn't have DVDs back then. They had like CDs, VHS, and um, and other stuff. But anyway, so I think lots of you do uh, love anime, and I think um, there's like lots of um, different cultures that stem from anime. There's like cosplay, uh, there's like games, and figures, and so on. So. And I think it's very important for you to connect to other people who have the same sort of uh, passions. So, one example is over here. So, uh, the guy in the black hat uh, over there, so his name is Yusuke, and he was actually another Nishida Hikaru fan. So, I was in Japan, and I just saw him in line, and I just like introduced myself, hey, you're a Nishida Hikaru fan. I said, yeah, of course I am, um, idiot. And because uh, we were like, lining up for a concert. Um, but so uh, we became like very good friends, and um, like we got to like hang out and so on and so on. So when I was in Japan, I would hang out with him, and when he was in England, he would hang out with me and so on and so on. So it's very important to um, connect through hobbies because um, you've already found somebody who really shares uh, the same point of views and the same passions uh, with you. So up until now, I've been like studying lots of um, colloquial Japanese. I've been studying Japanese on my own, which meant that my Japanese was like very broken. And um, I knew I wouldn't have like gotten far uh, with my level of Japanese, so I decided to go to university and start to like really brush up on my Japanese. And um, I can tell you today that you know, with all the Japanese companies I work with right now, that it's like, really, really important to be able to like do those uh, communicating um, with these uh, clients yourself instead of like going through um, a translator. It's like, really, really essential. So further uh, business study of um, Japanese is uh, very much recommended. So when I was studying uh, Japanese in university at that time, uh, so this is where I lived, uh, in a very, very small apartment. So um, my wife and I moved out, we lived over here. Uh, we, there's like no washing machine, we had to like wash our clothes in a sink, and it's like, really dingy, but um, had a great time. Um, it's the first time ever in my life that I passed with um, top marks. I mean, as you saw earlier on, my marks were absolutely terrible. And I think it's because that I really found um, a passion in life. And um, I think once you discover your passion and start to live it, um, you know, everything just like flows together. And um, I think it always does. When I was at university, I was, um, I got myself um, a job as um, Japan Airlines ground staff, so helping like poor lost souls in Heathrow Airport, and um, that was actually a fantastic experience as well because I got to like meet lots of Japanese passengers, got to meet a few uh, famous folks as well uh, at the same time, and um, the pay was um, quite good as well. And then when I graduated, uh, Japan Airlines they said, Danny, why, why don't you join us as a computer engineer? And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And so I just joined them as a computer engineer. And not only because of my language abilities, uh, but because of my computing abilities, which I picked up mainly uh, from the internet um, at that time. So this was my first desk at Japan Airlines. This was still in London, um, in that little corner over there with a the little red box. So that's my first desk. And so at that time, I thought, you know, this is like, really great. I'm like uh, speaking Japanese, I'm in a Japanese company. But I wasn't in Japan. And um, so I wanted to be in Japan. Um, I started doing the milk rounds. Do you say milk rounds in the US? No, do you? Mm. So the milk round in England means to like hunt around for a job. So next time, if you want to talk about um, job hunting and your boss is behind you, you could say, hey Derek, you're doing the milk rounds? So uh, it's kind of like a secret code for you, the milk rounds. So anyway, that's uh, called um, milk rounds looking for a job. So I stumbled upon this job for a scientific journal called Nature. And um, they were based in Tokyo. And I went along for an interview, uh, spoke with the boss, and we talked about how it would be really cool to um, have a, a Korean uh, website. And um, so I went home that day. Uh, so when I was at university, I actually took uh, Korean as well, so I speak Korean as well. 
And um, so I stayed up like very late and I came up with this uh, mock-up of a Korean uh, website uh, over here, uh, done that in Word. I printed it out, saved it onto a floppy disk, and because I was stalking this CEO, I went to his hotel and stuck it under his um, uh, dog. <laughs> and when he woke up, he like, uh, it looks like he was like very pleased with what he saw. So he contacted the recruitment agency and demanded to like see me straight away. And so basically what happened was he said to me, okay, Danny, uh, I'm gonna send you to Japan for like a week of uh, tests and interviews. I'm not gonna pay you, uh, but if you do well, then we'll hire you. If not, then it's, uh, then it's your fault. And uh, I said, uh, okay, you've got a deal. So I went over to Japan and um, went for these interviews and um, tests and so on and so on. I did the best I could. Uh, it's my like, second from last day in Japan. Went back to my hotel, um, I cried, actually. <laughs> and um, it was, I've been working all those years to like beef up my Japanese just for that opportunity. Then I got a phone call the next day, and it was David who said, Danny, uh, we'd love to give you one way ticket to Japan. And in 1999, I found myself um, in Japan. And uh, when he called me, I was crying again. Anyway. So, um, we haven't got too much time here, so I'm just going to skip um, some of this over here. Uh, so after Nature, I made my way to um, Amazon, uh, this is my team over here, as a website manager, uh, Microsoft as a product manager. Uh, and then I set up my own company um, called Mirai, and uh, this is my first desk. And then I set up a brand called Culture Japan, where we share Japanese culture with the world. Okay. So just, uh, just two really, uh, really important points that uh, I want to share with you, um, and I don't, I don't think it's only relates. It's not just for the languages. It's for like anything that you want to do in life. And I think that uh, many humans they do things uh, based on necessity. So uh, all of us do things um, based on our um, basic human instincts. So we need food and shelter. Uh, we need to like go to the toilet, and we do that very naturally, and it's, like, it's built into our natural instincts. Uh, but I think that if you have something, if you have a like, goal uh, that you want to achieve and you make it a necessity, you will make it happen. And um, I found that everything I do in life, um, it's always um, really helped me get to um, where I want to be going to. So I'm not telling you that it's going to be plain sailing. Um, you know, there's, you know come across, you're going to come across hurdles, you're going to come across some like, really horrible people and so on and so on. But um, if it's a need, then you'll always make it happen. So this is something that I was saying to, um, I preach to everyone, including myself, uh, when um, there are times which uh, it, it does get tough sometimes. It does, it's not all roses. Um, it's come and live your passion and the rest will just follow. I think that um, this is like really important. Um, I've spoke to like lots of bosses in the anime industry and they all say the same thing as well when they go and do their talks. Once you've like, discovered your passion and you start to live it, then the rest really does um, start to come out. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for this Thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, so just very quickly, uh, before it's checking out time, so it looks like there is um, a questionnaire over here. No, 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 it's not a questionnaire. It says, uh, it's a test. It's a test over here. It says, please rate your level of satisfaction with the event. I'm going to tell you the, the, the answer. <laughs> no, no, I know you won't answer that. But anyway, so uh, if you fill in the, the correct answers, then uh, then you'll win lots of goodies. And um, I think is someone giving out these goodie bags with fifty dollar notes in it. Is that right? Uh, what? There's one bag with a hundred dollar note. Is that correct? Okay, that will be okay. So give these out. So um, I have released a CD. So um, I do a little bit of singing. So I'm actually I sing on one of these tracks actually. So it's called Mirai Music, it's got uh, all the songs from Culture Japan Season 2. So this is not released yet, uh, it'll be released very soon. And I've only got one of here, but there's like a few hundred of you over here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'd love to have a picture with all of you. So I've got this like lovely wide-angle lens over here, and my missus is going to come over here and take photos of me. Okay, and so if we can like, kind of like, gather around here. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to upload this photo, and uh, if you come to my website, there's like an annotation tool. 
So if you annotate your face, and um, I'll like, choose a few, and then I'll send you one of these. Does that, does that sound okay? Does that sound good? Thanks, guys. Right, should we do that? Let me ask you.